Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome for the first time. I'm gonna show you how I was able to create these designer inspired nightstands that I have seen on some very big designer Instagram accounts for a fraction of the cost by using unfinished nightstands. I think you're really gonna like it. I'm so happy with how it turned out, so I can't wait to show you. We recently upgraded to a California King bed and our old bed frame matched the nightstands that we had and we'll probably sell that as a set and so i need to get new nightstands but because we have a lot of depth to the space and not a lot of width you can see the door already has to be changed because it hits the nightstands i didn't want to get anything too wide and the old nightstands were a bit wider so the only design that i came across that i absolutely loved was mcgee and co bedroom inspo with these beautiful nightstands and when i came across them online they were probably about 1700 dollars, which was definitely out of my budget but also they were so wide um which just does not work for in here so i decided to try and search for something simple that was very similar and came across these unfinished nightstands from home depot i think amazon in the u.s sells them for like 150 in canada they were around 250 on home depot so these actually came with a little shelf. I haven't installed it yet because I just wanted to see proportions. And I think that they could really work, but something that's troubling me a little bit and Chris isn't a huge fan of is that they are very deep. If you look at the top of these, they are a square. Um, our old nightstands I think probably ended about here which would be a little bit better of a proportion. And I have flipped these over, I'll show you in a minute. I think I can make them less deep. Is it necessary? I don't know, we've got this wing headboard. So the, the extra depth is nice, and since we're losing a little bit of width, having the extra depth is perfect. So just unsure about that. Um, but I wanna show you what my idea is to make it look like my inspo. So, the first thing that I would do is use a router to make the top detail the same. I think that would be pretty easy. I've never used a router, but I do have one. Um, I don't know how to put in the details on the legs. They're like these little stripes. So that is something to think about. The inspo, also the drawer comes all the way over to here. So I've been thinking about putting a thin piece of wood that I would attach onto this that comes all the way across, which would be super helpful because I want to put two knobs, one that's like over here and one that's over here. And then I wouldn't have to worry about filling that and how it looks once it's stained. Um, then I picked up this trim from Home Depot, which I think will complete the look so that will go across the top of the drawer and on the sides. That is such an easy thing to add on. Um, I could just fill this hole and put this on and router the top and call it a day, but I think I'm gonna play around with this a little. I don't have a solid plan, that's like the loose plan, but I just wanted to film it so that I could give you an update as this project evolves. Also, the legs come off, so I think ideally I might swap this leg with all of this grain here. Look at the other one with one at the back because I think that that is um, a bit too prominent for me. And then I think I will try to stain them a very similar color to the ones that I was inspired by. Chris really loves the natural wood look, but I uh, want something a little bit darker and um, yeah. I was gonna say warmer, but they are pretty warm already. I flipped them over so you can take a better look. So you can see where the drawer ends. This isn't necessary, especially if I made this shallower. So I measured where our other nightstands end, and I think that I could move this whole section in a bit. Obviously the drawer needs to be able to close, so I need to figure out at which point this hits here, but I think we've got some space. Um, so if I did want to cut this down, you can see these side pieces are attached to the top. So I'd unscrew that, I'd just cut, I'd remove everything from this top piece, cut the top piece, then cut the sides, um, 
So it would probably just be cutting the sides, cutting the top, and this piece that this is attached to. I don't think it would be too hard to do. Um, just annoying because you'd have to attach all those screws back in again and make a new hole for these to go in. But it would only be on the back piece that I'd have to reattach these corners. I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of what I started with versus what I ended with because I am just starting on the second one, so it's the perfect point to show the comparison of the two. Working from top to bottom, you can see the edge detail. I routered the top of this one. Then working the way down, you can see that the drawer ended right here. I extended that out. And when you pull it open, you can see there is nothing here, but it gives the illusion that there is. Then I added piece here and here just so that it was flush with the front of the new drawer front. And then I added this trim, added two knobs. The original only had the one in the middle and then added this leg detail, which was cut in with a saw. And then on the actual stock image of this nightstand, the shelf was probably about here. So I moved that up and that was very easy to do and didn't um, really change anything. You could do that even if you weren't making any of the other changes. And then of course I stained it and lined the drawer. I am just about to build the nightstand and it's really, really easy. They give you some bolts to attach the legs. You flip over the top and attach them in there. And then these brackets hold up the shelf, which you can install at any height that you want to. I noticed that the legs all had these little tiny dots or holes um, only on one side. So I'm assuming that's where they suggest you mount the shelf, but I did it higher on the other ones because that's the look I wanted. Um, and it was very easy to do to change it. You just have to make sure it's level. Um, also, before you install the legs, if you do want your nightstand to be a little bit shorter, it's probably a good idea to cut it now rather than later. Now I have the table built. We are gonna cut out the pieces for the front. So the inspo image had the drawer front coming over to the legs, and this one you can see stops here. So we're gonna measure from here to here and here to here. And then another piece that's gonna be the length and this little height. And same with up here, just double check all your measurements. Don't assume that they're the same width all the way up. Um, and that will make sure that this is all one level. Just a comparison between the two, see you can see that the front extends. So that is the part that we are working on. And then after that's cut, we will work on the trim. I just measured out and marked the front of the nightstand drawer. So I am using birch plywood. There might be something better to use, but this is what I could find. And the reason I went with this is because it was a quarter inch thick and I didn't want it to extend out past the legs of the nightstand. So this worked really well for me. Um, maybe you can find something better. That's a better color, a better match, but I think this turned out pretty good. And then I will iron on a banding and edge banding to this. Um, so I'm going to cut this out and then I will do those other strips for above and below after. I'd recommend using a table saw or anything that's going to get you a straight line. If you use a jigsaw freehand, it's probably not going to give you a straight enough line. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, but whatever you've got that can cut a straight line to cut this out will work fine. I just finished cutting out the front pieces that are going to go on here. So now those are finished. I need to get some edge banding and iron that on to here. And then once that's dried, I will be able to, or cooled, I guess, I will cut it off. Um, and then we can work on the molding that will go on the front of here. Here is the edge banding or veneer edging that I got. So it matches 
the plywood and I'm gonna cut it in half because you can see this is quite thin and I don't want to waste any and I don't actually think I have any to waste um, so you just iron it on with a literal iron this one is one that I just use for crafts at this point because I think many many years ago I accidentally ironed a pair of non iron pants and it burned on to the iron so anyways I'm going to use that and it will give a nice finished edge to these pieces and specifically the drawer I finished ironing on the edge banding and this side I tried to line up pretty well but this side you can see there's excess so what I did last time is I used an exacto knife and cut it off and then gave the edges a light sand I don't know if that's what's recommended and I decided not to add any on to the ends of these skinny strips because they're gonna be hidden but I did on the drawer pieces because you will actually see those when you pull the drawer in and out I am just working on the trim for the front of the drawer so that it looks like this. I got this trim at Home Depot. I will try to link the exact one, but it was the perfect dimensions to go around the edges. So I'm gonna use the miter box and saw because I prefer to use that over the power um, miter saw. So I'm gonna do a little picture frame, we'll call it, around the edges of this drawer. And if you look at the end of this trim, you can see the thicker part right here is what we're going to have outwards and the thinner part is going to be facing inwards. So I'm going to measure from here to here, here to here, all the way around, cut it, and then we will glue it into place and clamp it. And I still have to trim the um, veneer off, but just leaving it a little bit longer. I also just want to quickly mention, try not to get the wood glue anywhere else because on a previous project, say you got the wood glue here, that area of wood wouldn't stain properly. I don't know if that's the case for every wood glue, but I'm just mentioning it as a little cautionary tale. This is the little contraption I've made to make sure that the glue dries and the panel molding stays in place. So I have a piece of trim that I just had to spare, and you can see this is the back of the drawer front. So the clamps are going into the trim in the back of the drawer front so the front of the drawer front isn't getting damaged and it dries perfectly in place. I'm just about to start doing the routering on the top as well as the leg detail. I have to take these outside so I don't make a big mess. Um, so I thought I may as well do them all in one shot. So the way that I cut this detail onto, onto here is... A coping saw or a saw with a tiny little blade and that helped me do these little tiny ones and then the middle one once I had done it with a coping saw I used a saw with a bigger blade this one's from my miter box and then I smoothed it out with some sandpaper so that was really easy it worked better than what I was gonna try to do and it doesn't need to be perfect so hopefully that is helpful I just used the router to do the top of this table. It's only my second time using it, but I think I'm getting the hang of it and gives such a nice look and more custom look to the finish of it. So I'm really happy with that. I let the wood glue dry overnight and now we are ready to attach to the front of this nightstand. So I'm gonna use the broad nailer to attach this to the drawer front, making sure I don't accidentally nail into these side pieces. And then I'm gonna also attach these trim pieces and use this wood filler to fill in any holes or gaps. This one works really well because it's stainable and I've obviously tried it on the other one and it worked really well. I'm just prepping to stain this. Everything is sanded down, specifically where all of the wood filler was and the color I used was called Cardovan Brown, and then I had a can of whitewash pickling, which I watered down because it was just very white. If you are testing different stains, what I did was on the other one, I um, practiced on the back side of the shelf 
because you know that what the wood is like and how the stain is gonna actually take when you put it on. So there is a good little tip. So can't wait to have this finished. And once that is all done, I'll probably put a top coat on and then put the brackets for the shelf because the other time I did this on the other one, I put the brackets on first, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah. Here's how the nightstands turned out. I really love them. I think I got all of the important details on the more expensive version and was able to translate it into these. I thought I would do a little breakdown of where everything is from. The nightstands obviously are the look for less that we just did. The headboard is a bestseller from Wayfair. It comes in a bunch of different colors. The lamps are from the Studio McGee Target collection. The vase is from McGee & Co, but a bunch of different places sell it. The flowers I got from Hobby Lobby, but there's a very similar Amazon version. I picked some books for each side of the nightstand that made sense for the person. So these ones I picked for myself. I've got a design book and a British boutique hotel one that I really love. I have this beautiful Studio McGee Target scalloped dish, a basket that we've had for so long. This throw at the end of the bed is from West Elm and it's reversible. So you've got the darker color on one side, the other side is a light color. So I think it's great because depending on the decor, I can always switch it up. Some of these pillows are from Tonic Living. The gray one is from H&M. And then on this side, I believe that I got this from Indigo a long time ago. And then this we picked up on our recent trip to England. I haven't styled anything below yet, but I probably just need to put another basket. The art is from Etsy and the frame I thrifted and then cut. I will link all of it in the description box for you in case you are looking for any of these items. The next goal is probably to add panel molding to the back wall, but one of the issues when we upgraded our bed was that the door doesn't completely open, it hits the nightstands. So I also need to change the door. I wanna do two really skinny French doors. So I'm also working on that project. And then I can adjust the bed and decide if it needs to be more centered before I put on the molding on the walls. I love how these turned out. I hope you do too. I think I was really able to get that designer look for less and at a better size for our bedroom. Um, all of the details are on my blog with step-by-steps in case you're looking for a little more info or links. And if you're not already subscribed, I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.